God bless you for joining. Please invite friends and families to be a part of this stream. Tarry until. God bless you for joining on TikTok. We are getting ready to pray. If you love prayer, then stay tuned. Where the presence of my Jesus is, there is fullness of joy, joy, and at His right hand, there are pleasures forever. Kai. So Jesus is here, Aya, is here right now. Oh, Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hi, Vic, how are you doing? In the name of Jesus, we give God the praise and glory. Today is Thursday, and... Um, we are excited for the weekend because God is about to do mighty and great things for us in our lives and that of our families. Today we are going to spend more time in prayer and I'm trusting that the Lord that he has, we spend time in prayer, he also deals with a lot of things that has been plaguing our lives and also directing our path and moving us into that which he has ordained for us to be in. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. As you're praying in the Holy Ghost, I also want you to share the stream to your friends, your family, and your loved ones so that we can all be together and we pray. The Bible says one shall knock out a thousand, two shall knock out tens of thousands. That means there is power in agreement. There is power in uniformity. There is power in unity. So I want you to invite a friend, a family, loved one, and as we join to pray together, Amen. Maleva dosa brada baha. Ivan lebele bredo sabha. Come on, lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Karada bada brado sabha. Tala bala baha. Jevanda brado zevetes ke pala bala ba. Ima le bala brado zavan. Tala bala ba brado zavaya. Ale manta brado zavaka panda bala ba brada zavan. Tala bredo zare. 
Come on, pray in the break of the fire in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that we stir up ourselves in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And let those revel there. Even the valley of those of the brothers of fire. The man tala baka pande bede ha, a jelle va doze revan tala baha. Ivan de bele bebra doze rava da bando robo bobo so vanda daya, a jebele bra doze van tala bada baha. Even the bros of Vanta Bedeha, Alabaca Pada Babra da Bada Bahaha, Azavanta Brados of Vanta Balaba, Even the Bella Brados of Ha, Azamanta Labrados of Venta Lebaha, Irebecos of Panda Brados and Lebe, Azada Brada Baya, Ifanda Bala Brados of Vanta La Bala Babaha, Elebrede, Ivan de Belebredos, Revede de Ha, Amaca Panda Bala Brados of Vanta La Bala Baha. Ivanta 
Come on, somebody lift up your voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to give him the praise. Begin to give him the glory. For he alone deserves to be praised. For him alone deserves to be honored. For him alone deserves to be glorified. Oh my God, my King, my Lord. For you alone are glorious, for you alone are might, for you alone you are magnificent, for you alone you are glorious. Oh Jesus, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in the heavens, be glorified on the earth. A Lizabeth, a Rivadea, a Rivadea, a Rivadea, a man of Alabama, a man of Santa Lavaya, a Rivadea Brados, a Bantalaba. Come on, glorify the name of the Lord, exalt him, magnify the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised, he is worthy to be glorified, he is worthy to be exalted. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You are worthy, you are worthy, hallelujah, hallelujah. A man to the bear, he rebed the bandorobo, a sabrandebe, a jelebe, a jelebe, a lebadoza, he reket the baduados of brende belecotosa, a man to the lebe, Zadian de Bredezeva, a man to the baya, a balabada, a bada, 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 a in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody lift up their voice and plead the blood of Jesus? The blood that speaks a better word than that of Abel's blood. The blood that was shed for you and I. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Uh, lift up your voice and say, Father, I plead the blood. I cleanse myself in the blood. I wash myself in the blood. I, 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 I receive atonement in the blood. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, the blood of Jesus, uh, let it speak on my behalf. Uh, let me be cleansed by the blood. Wash by the blood. Sanctify by the blood, purified by the blood. Ah, Shabana Babra Konsada, Imantala Banana Banana Babra. We chant in the Holy Ghost. In a 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, recently I just discovered the reason why many people don't like to come to Bible studies. It is not because they don't want to come. It's because there is a Satan that is withstanding them. There is a, there is a Satan. There is a Satan. There is an adversary. Eh? That is standing against them. That is why they are not coming to Bible studies. Because I recently also discovered that any time you sit down with someone and you open the Bible eh, to discuss, to study, instantly the presence of God comes down. So the devil knows that when they spend even two or three minutes in the presence of God, things will begin to happen to them. So the enemy has successfully made humanity so busy that we don't find time to prioritize God in our lives. Oh, I also recently learned that there are two things that matter. There are two things that is in this world. One, the destruction of humanity. And two, the salvation of humanity. You have to choose which one you belong to. If you want to be among the members that are saved, there are things that are required for you to do. For instance, prayer. Reading a word. Worshipping God in spirit and in truth. There are many of us who worship God all right in spirit because you are born again, but not in truth. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want us to pray and continue to pray. Prayer is good. But before we pray and continue to pray, Zelem Rendos Kefaya Zilele Ibada Dabrado Zeven Talabaho Shadaya Venemes Kefala Brado Zavan Talabaha Manta Brado Zeven Talabala Dada Vahosha de Vrenda Bedeha Ivele Brado Zavan Talabala Bada Brado Zevan Talabakosha Bende de Nebaha Ifende Bradoska Fanda Brada Zava. First Chronicles chapter 21. First Chronicles chapter 21. Oh Jesus. I want us to read something. And we are going to pray. Alright. 
So I want you to bear with me. I want us to read something and then we will continue to pray. Let me, let me move this up a little bit so that I can see here. So 1 Chronicles chapter 21, I want you to look at something here. The Bible says that Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a censor of Israel. All right. Now we have read all these things. All these things we have read. So now, I want to read from verse number 7. Okay. This command was also evil in the sight of God, so he punished Israel. It is David that led the enemy into Israel. He was the gateway into the city because he was the leader. He was the king of the nation of Israel. Now remember that the verse 1 says that Satan stood against Israel. So, um, past couple of days, I said something, and I'm going to repeat myself. David was not the target, but Israel was the target. David was the gateway through which he could pass to assess Israel. So, I, I told you that David representing the leadership and the king, you must always make sure you are praying for your leaders. Wives, you must pray for your husbands. They are the head. <laughs> I, I make there, there are some things that leaders or people that are in the place of authority, they are dealing with, not because of them, all, they are dealing with because they are the gateway to assess certain people that they are covering. That is why the enemy is busily attacking them. So, they are not the target. So, when you go and you hear that a certain man of God has fallen, he was not the target. The enemy wanted to remove him from the place so that he can access one of the church members. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, those of you Blaming the president and the president did this and the president did that and, and, and in all different parts of the country. Blaming the cabinet ministers and blaming the, the leadership and all those things. Are, listen, listen. They are the gateways to their constituencies, their regions. They are the gateways to the country to assess your life, to cause havoc in your life, to cause... A, 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 a paralyzing effect in your destiny. Am I making sense to you? The devil wants to abort the destinies of people. He came to steal, kill, and to destroy. But they are the gateways. That is why he, that, that's why the Bible says that pray for those that are in authority. Pray for the leadership. Pray, 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 and pray. Pray. So, forgive me if I Repeat this because it is very important and it is very necessary. Many leaders may not come and tell you what they deal with and what the, the attacks they go through and, it's, and the things that they are experiencing. And, and, and business owners will not come and tell you. But someone's business will collapse just because the devil is trying to access just one employee. <laughs> you people, you don't know the relentlessness of the devil that we are dealing with. So because he wanted to assess Israel, he had a beef with Israel. Because Israel was the chosen nation of God. They represented God. And because of that, the guy was upset because through Israel, the Christ will be born. <laughs> so the guy had a vendetta against Israel. He wanted to kill Israel. Completely annihilate. Why do you think that? <laughs> now, by the way, this will shock you. But listen. For Jesus to come back, eh, Israel, the nation, will have to go on their knees and beg for Christ to come. Or else Christ is not coming. So it is the desperation 
the prayer, the knee, the crying of the nation of Israel that will cause Christ to come back or else Christ is not coming yet. So why do you think that the devil is so furious staring at violence in the Middle East area and there is constant battle against Israel. Why do you think the Palestinians and the Islamic State, uh, they are calling for a total annihilation of the state of Israel? Why do you think they're doing that? They're doing that because the enemy wants to wipe out humanity. If, if they are able to successfully wipe out the nation of Israel, it will be difficult for Christ to come back. Because, see, according to prophecy, they must go on their knees and cry out. Because, see, the devil will have to push them to a corner to the point that he's ready to kill them. And then now they will cry out and say, Lord, save us. So whatever the devil does, eh, he is very strategic in what he does. In what he does. So maybe because of your son, that's why the enemy is coming after you. And because we lack the discerning ability to discern the times and the seasons that we are in, we fall prey to the stratagems of the wicked one. So David had fallen to the manipulation and, 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 and to, and to the, 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 the scams of the enemy. He fell. So the Bible says in verse 7 that this command was evil in the sight of God. So he punished Israel. So he punished Israel. So many of you, eh, you are in a certain situation because the devil stood against you and incited you against your own self because you carry the potential to do mass damage to the camp and the kingdom of hell. The mandate or, or the mandate to which God has placed upon you, the purpose, the destiny alone is so big and so great uh, that through you millions and millions and millions of people will come to Christ. Through you, the books you will write, the movies you are going to script, am I making sense? Uh, the music you are going to make, uh, am, am I making sense? The businesses that you are going to start, uh, the orphanages you are going to birth of uh, is going to do mass havoc. To the kingdom of darkness. So the guy will stand against you and cause you to sin against your own God. So some of you, you are in a detrimental situation because you were not able to resist the devil. And every action comes with its consequence. So God says there is no way that I can, I, I can, I can watch this done without the consequences. So, you know what? Like I said the other time, if you break the head, the serpent will bite. If you dig a pit, you fall into it. So, there is no way God was going to sit down because his law is his law. When the head is broken, the serpent must bite. There is nothing I can do to protect it or to prevent that from happening because you broke the head. So, the Bible says that in verse 8, then David said to God, I have sinned greatly by doing this. Now I beg. Take away the guilt of your servant. I have done very foolish, a very foolish thing. The difference between David, the Davids, and the Saul is that David acknowledged his sin and accepted it to be so and pleaded for mercy. But Saul, Saul, Saul was another man. The Saul type of people are the people that will rather point fingers at God because of what they are going through. Forgetting that God is not the one to be blamed for the foolish decisions that they made. So David said, I have made a foolish choice. He called himself out. I've made a foolish choice. Hello? Yeah. Your mother gave you money to go to school. Go to college eh, and study and graduate top of your class. But you decided to attach yourself with some foolish people. And then you started going clubbing. 
you started smoking, you started doing things that are not in line with, you were raised in the Christian family, but you thought you were in prison, so you wanted to break yourself free, and then you got pregnant. Is it the fault of God? No. Why are you pointing your hands on God? God, you, you could have stopped me from having sex. Why didn't you stop me from having sex? Listen, wake up from the, the Lululand and learn to accept your mistakes and your faults uh, and go before God with a repentant heart uh, so that God can show mercy. And because you're afraid that your parents are going to react, when you got pregnant, a friend of yours told you that there is this medicine you can take and the baby will come out. You took that medicine and you have been bleeding ever since. You go to the doctors now, they say that your womb is destroyed, so they have to take your womb away. And now you are crying. Is it the fault of God? God is all powerful. But the fact that God is all powerful does not mean that he's going to suspend your will and do whatever he wants to do. Your will, your choice. Hello? Need I mention more of some of these things that we do? No, by you, you yourself, let the word of God minister to you. So David acknowledged it. And then so the Lord, the Lord in verse 9 said, The Lord said to God, David's seer. David's seer. <laughs> Listen. Go and tell David. This is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Three options. Then again, the concept of will is at work here. God is not going to choose for you. You got to choose for yourself. God will never choose for you. Three options. Three. Three. Three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. Listen. <laughs> God says that I... I I cannot let you go unpunished because, listen, this thing that you have done, it is evil in my sight. And the way I, I am a just God, I am a righteous God. I am also a loving God. I am also a father. But I am a judge and I am a king. And if I don't do the appropriate thing, it will reflect back on me as a partial God. As an unjust God. So no, no matter how much I love you, and no matter how much I care for you, I must still carry on my duties as a judge and as a king. As a father and as a righteous God. See, many believers, we are stuck in the place of God is loving and God understanding. God is loving and God understands. So we are not able to see the other dimensions and attributes of God. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Now, it is interesting. So the Bible says, so God went to David and said to him, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Now, the, 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 the men and women of our day today, eh? When God sends a prophet, we want to pick up a stone and stone the prophet because we think that the prophet is about to gossip about our life. And we, we are able to boldly stand in front of the man and the woman of God and lie to them in their face. Meanwhile, you know that the very thing that you have done is true and they are not lying. That is how come many of you, eh? Many of you, that's how come many of you, you miss the hour of your visitation, the hour of your deliverance, the hour of your restoration. The Bible says, confess ye your faults one to another. It will take man for God to do what he wants to do in your life. God could have gone to David directly and said to David, I am giving you three choices. But God says, no, I am going to use my man, the servant, the prophet. Those of you that don't respect men of God. Those of you that don't respect the unctions of the men of God. Those of you that are not submitted to a body. Those of you that have no idea how to honor the men that God has placed charge over us. Listen and listen very carefully. I keep saying this and I will always say this. I will always say this. 
and it is in the scripture. It is not your mother that will be called to give an account for you. It is not your father that will be called to give an account for you. Maybe some of you, you have not read that in the Bible yet. It is not your boyfriend that you are fornicating with that will be called to give an account for you. And it is not your teacher that you respect so much or your supervisor that you honor so much because you think he's going to give you a promotion. That will be called to give an account for you. That pastor that you don't respect, that pastor you don't, you don't regard, eh? that man of God you are constantly dishonoring and disrespecting, that man is the one that God is going to stand, going to stand before God one day and give an account for your life. Oh man. What will he say? How is he or she going to give that account for you? Those of you that are sneaky and cunning, eh? you don't know that God has already exposed you. You don't know. You don't know. God had already exposed David to the prophet. So there was no need in denying. There was no need in telling a lie. I love this David because of the humility that he had. Those of you that have the saying, oh, God knows my heart. Christianity is my heart. Christianity is a heart that, that, that nonsense that we cover ourselves with and we parade around with and we continue to do foolishly. Now, listen to wisdom as I speak to you in the name of the Lord. By God, this same God, actions are weighed. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Christianity is the outward expression eh, of the divine life in you. So if I look at your accent and I look at the way you conduct yourself, I look at the kind of music you listen to, the kind of clothing you are wearing, the kind of food you eat, the way you carry yourself, I will be able to tell what kind of spirit is what is possessing you at a time or is influencing you at a particular time. Say what? We serve God in our hearts. Some of you, you say these things without knowing what it means. You don't. And it's very sad. So the prophet went ahead. And said, this is what the Lord says. Take your choice. Three years of famine. Three months of being swept away before your enemies. With their swords overtaking you or three days of the sword of the Lord days of plague in the land with the angel of the Lord raving ravaging every part of Israel now decide how I should answer the one who sent me. So even the prophet was waiting for a reply from David to take back to God. Couldn't that, couldn't go. The David said, okay, you know what prophet I've heard? I will talk to God myself because I, I can also talk to God. See, God picks and chooses what he wants to do at a particular time. But that does not mean that if he's not choosing a particular way to operate, it nullifies God's ability of using that. I am sick and tired of people saying that we don't need prophets anymore because you can be your own prophet. Do you know the difference between the prophetic office and the gift of prophecy? Hello? No, 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 no. See, let us not make this common mistake. That is how come there's so much division and there's so much problems and chaos in the church. The teacher will have the audacity to insult the prophet because don't understand the prophetic office and how the prophetic operates. You are not God. To decide for God how God should communicate and minister to his people. You are not God. And so therefore, pastor, focus on the office of a pastor and shepherd the people and pray for grace that you'll be able to work with the other four parts of the ministry. You can't kind of hear pastors butchering prophets, butchering other men of God, sowing seeds of disrespect and dishonor in the hearts of the people. So now they don't, they don't value or respect the other offices because they think that the pastor is everything. No! 
The pastor has his place. The prophet has his place. The teacher has his place. The apostle has his place. The evangelist has his place. Uh, if we are going to get it right, we all have to, have to agree to come together to work, respecting each other's office and appreciating the grace that is upon each office. I don't know why I'm speaking like this, but listen, it is hard time that you people, you people, you people, the children of God, you demand to know the truth of God's word, and then you push your pastors to teach you what is written in the word. If it's not being honest and truthful with you, pray that God will release you and, and show you where you need to go so that you can get the unadulterated word of God to consume so that you can grow. There are a lot of malnourished Christians. Malnourished Christians. He says that he gave gifts unto man, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, what? To, to edify the saints, to perfect the saints, to mature the saints, uh, to bring them. That means that every office brings in what is required so that the believer can become just like Jesus Christ. It is because of our selfishness and pride that has opened the door for the enemy to come in. And, and I'm hearing the Holy Ghost bringing me to the verse number one. Satan stood against Israel. So Satan has, has risen against the church. And he's using the pastors and the leaders to, 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 to uh, how, how do I say it? And he's inciting the pastors and the leaders of the church against themselves so that confusion and chaos will thrive. And when confusion and chaos thrives, he sneaks in the back door and then he begins to cause havoc. How many of our children, how many of the churches, how many of the body of Christ, they are dying due to cancer, they are dying due to all kinds of sickness, premature death, uh, a young man, a young woman, all of a sudden some kind of sickness we don't understand will hit them. And, and you, the pastor, you don't carry the grace to be able to pray for that thing to go. But the pastor that is next door is anointed and sound and is a deliverance minister that can pray for your member, for your member to be delivered. You will never allow. Why? Because you are afraid that when you go to that pastor and the pastor lay hands uh, and they are delivered that pastor will take the members i have a question for you and you be and you be have you died for someone were you ever crucified for someone abba what kind of what kind of what kind of demonic devilish they cherish attitude is that childishness it is what is going on in the church the message is sifting to another dimension. That's not why I'm here. God, have mercy. Now, let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the verse 12. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. It, I, it, just, it just went there. It just went there. Mm, mm, this is good. Mm. So, verse 13, David said to God, I am in deep distress. But you think now when you're in deep distress. Hey, there are a lot of pastors, there are a lot of men of God, they are in deep distress, but they can't tell you. Because they know the mistakes they have made. But because of pride, they are not willing. <laughs> My wife said this is good. <laughs> they, are, they, are not, they are not willing to have themselves. So, ah, humility. Humility. Ah, humility. Ah, rather, fa please, 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 take us through processes that will grind us so that we will be humble. Why? It is not easy, but please, for the sake of the kingdom, so that we don't miss the kingdom. I am in great distress. Let me fall into the hands of the Lord. For his mercy is very great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. David knew that the heart of man is deceptive and desperately wicked. <laughs> Eh? If you fall into the hands of man, he will forget that he is also a man like you. He will forget that he is also flesh and blood and he also makes mistakes. And he also made a mistake that just that, just that morning. If you fall into the hands of man, that man will kill you all. Oh. 
Man will display it to make you understand that, listen, I dare for here. Zimando Ravadaha. Oh, yeah. So he said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord. For his mercy is great. I have come to tell someone that the mercies of God are new every morning. The mercies of God, because of the mercies of God, we are not consumed. I have come to talk to someone that because of the mercies of God, you are not destroyed. And his mercies has no bounds because his compassion never fails. We need to pray and plead for mercy. 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 Let me fall into the hands of the Lord. For his mercy is very great. David is a man that was greatly helped by the Lord. That is why he was able to say, I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The Holy Ghost has been assigned to us to help us today for the rest of the time. I won't talk anymore. I will pause here. Lift up your voice and begin to pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. You know you messed up. You know the mistakes you've made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it is the devil. Anybody listening to me, if you do this, stop immediately. It is the devil that will incite you to blame God for your foolishness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to have a sealer moment. It is the devil that will incite you to begin to insult God. How can you be upset at, at the God that created you as an expression because of your own stupidity, your own mistake, your own foolishness? How? Make it make sense, Abi. So let me tell you, if you don't know, it is the devil. It is a demon assigned to you. Because the more you begin to say that, and the more you begin to behave like that, you will realize that the devil is now slicking through the back door to now incite hate in your heart. So that will push you from even coming to church. So instead of you now coming and running towards God so that he can show you mercy, you want to run away from church because you are blaming God for what is happening to you. Meanwhile, God has no part to play in what is happening to you. Eh? Some of you, eh? You are blaming God, but God didn't do anything. It was your grandmother that went to that fetish priest and sold your womb to that fetish priest. So the goodness of God is that I have given you my word. Come to me, ye that are heavenly, then I will give you rest. And as you pursue him in, 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 in truth and in spirit, then God reveals unto you the source of your problem so that you can deal with it. Many of you, eh, the reason why God cannot reveal to you the person or the thing that is bothering you or trying to destroy your life is because you are still in the flesh. You, you have not denied your flesh yet. So if I come and tell you that, you see, uh, um, uh, prophetically, as I'm seeing, it, it is in your mother's line, lineage, and I describe the person, and then you see that, hey, it is Antia, Antiaba. You go and take a knife and you want to kill Antiaba because you are still in the flesh. You are not mature enough. So for your own protection and for your own good, God will not even reveal. And then you tell you, keep praying. Lift up your voice. If you leave me, I'll talk too much. There's an unction in this house and there's a grace that has been released. Oh, thank you, God. Lift up your voice and pray for mercy. Pray for mercy. Begin to pray for mercy. Oh, pray for mercy. Mercy, pray for mercy. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Zabra do I will fall, I will rather fall in the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. 
male bracoza venta leva as if the men bradonza ravada zaveya e curiba da brada da bada da baia ei zilevrando se celebre de copaia a jamana mana mazantele ade e bala bradonza venta le bala doze re Father, I pray for mercy. Father, I pray for mercy. I pray for mercy. I pray for mercy. I let those revel there. You shall, because of the blood, I can come before you and obtain mercy. For your mercy is great, O oh God. For your mercy is great, O oh God. Your, your mercy be anew every morning, my God. I let do remember. For your mercy is forever. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, your compassion never fails. Amen. Show me mercy, O God. Show my children mercy, O God. Show my family mercy, O God. Show the ministry mercy, O God. Le badon zebe. In le vande brakon zavaya. Amen. Tele belebe. In vande bredon zara. A reve ke panda bana bradon zebelebe. A jiri adouza. A livi di abanda ravadoza. In vande bali abando roboboza. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now, thank God for the word. Just thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you glory, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. Spirit of the living God. Now I pray that let these words be directed to them that have been chosen to partakers of this word. Father, the very people that are in need of this word, Father, I pray that let them be the hearers of it. In the name of Jesus. Even if it is night at where they are sleeping, Lord, and they need to wake up to hear it, I pray that, Lord, wake them up to hear it. And I pray that the light in the word will enter into their heart and bring about illumination. In the name of Jesus. I give you praise. Amen. God bless you so much for joining us. Today is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. And we will be back tonight to pray 120 days of prayer for the youth and the young adults. Those of you that have been following, it's been awesome. We will be back to pray. And uh, we trust that the Lord is doing great and mighty things in the lives of the people of God. Also, good news. Uh, my new single is coming out tomorrow. So watch out on social media platforms. I'm telling you, if, if, if the song hits your device via Apple Store or Spotify or whatever it is that you use, YouTube Music, whatever you use, and it does not move you to pray, don't listen to it again. I'm telling you, if you listen to it once, eh, it will continuously play in your spirit. I'm telling you. Even when you are sleeping, you hear the sound playing in your spirit because it is a sound from heaven. And that sound has been released in a time as this to spark revival, to ignite revival, to ignite revival, to awaken people to destiny, bringing healing and deliverance and restoration to the nation. So listen, I'm not worried. I am excited and I need you to be excited. And when it hits, share with your friends and let them also be a partaker of what the Lord is doing in this day and in this time. But love ya. I will see you tomorrow, God willing. Ask the matter of I'll see you tonight on 120 days of prayer. And then tomorrow we'll top it up. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hallelujah.